It's Monday, April 25th, and this is your Coffee Break on the HAN Network. I'm Rob Adams in for Kate Chaplinski. Donald Eng will join me for the news and sports as well as weather. And we've got more going on with Don having history and a special guest as well later on as Loretta Swit, the two-time Emmy Award winner, will join us during this portion of the program. But here are the top stories across southwestern Connecticut. And of course, just further note on Miss Switch, she will be appearing in Bridgeport on May 1st. Now let's jump in to the morning headlines. Connecticut Democrats and Republicans will go to polls on Tuesday to vote in their party's presidential primary. Today at noon is the last chance to join a party to be eligible to vote tomorrow. Any residents who are unregistered or registered but not affiliated with a party may join the Republican or Democratic parties today in person. Only Republicans and Democrats are eligible to vote in primaries in Connecticut. Connecticut is one of five states holding presidential preference primaries on Tuesday along with Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, Maryland, and Delaware. In the most recent Quinnipiac poll of Connecticut voters, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton leads Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders here. On the Republican side, businessman and reality TV show star Donald Trump leads Ohio Governor John Kasich and Texas Senator Ted Cruz. We'll have more primary coverage tomorrow and on our political show, CT Pulse, on Wednesday with Josh Fisher and Kate Chaplinski. On to Trumbull now. Fire tore through a house at 175 White Plains Road in Trumbull Sunday afternoon. The address is listed as Blessed Lambs Preschool and a private residence. The column of smoke was visible as far south as the mouth of the Housatonic River on the Long Island Sound in Milford. Firefighters from the Trumbull Center, Long Hill, and Nichols Fire Departments were met with heavy fire from the rear and roof of the structure, according to a press release. While the fire remains under investigation by the Trumbull Fire Marshal's Office, early indicators is the fire started on the outside rear of the structure. The fire was declared under control at around 6.20 Sunday evening. No one was home at the time of the fire and there were no injuries. The Monroe Fire Department sent two units to the scene while Shelton provided station coverage in Trumbull Center. An expanded hazardous material abatement process in Wilton will result in changes to the Miller Driscoll School renovation project's timeline, and it will dip into the project's contingency budget to cover expanded costs. However, there is no increase in the cost of the project, and the budget's bottom line will remain unchanged, according to Chris Burney, Wil Wilton's Director of Facilities and Energy Management. Early in the project, the building committee committed to an abatement process that would eliminate identifiable hazardous materials, Bernie said at the building committee meeting earlier this month. In addition to the areas that have already been defined as having hazardous materials such as window caulking, tests will be conducted on areas where there are suspected hazardous materials. This would take the project far beyond requirements set by federal and state requirements in that testing would take place in areas that are not impacted by construction. Identifying these areas would cost about $24,000, Bernie said. He added that the cost of abatement should workers find everything the committee believes would be PCB contaminated is about $440,000. But Bernie said he is hoping it would cost less. The project's contingency budget stands at $3.4 million, and Bernie suggested taking the $440,000 from there. The $24,000 can be taken from other accounts that were enthusiastically budgeted. That's a quote early on, he said. You can read more about the project at WiltonBulletin.com. Cultural Center? Municipal Campus? Just Land Bank it? What's best to do with the 45-acre Schlumberger property that Ridgefield taxpayers recently spent $7.6 million on? So far, the town has recovered $5.6 million with two land sales, $4.3 million for 10 acres, where condominiums and coach homes are under construction, and $1.3 million for five acres zoned for mixed business use. But 30 acres remain, and a final workshop on the property's future is planned this week by the Schlumberger Citizens Committee, which has studied the property for a year.
Committee Chairman Dick Larson told the Ridgefield Press that his group is looking forward to public feedback before it finalizes its recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. The workshop is scheduled for Thursday night from 6.30 to 8.30 at the Town Recreation Center on Danbury Road. The committee expects to present its recommendations to the selectmen on May 25th. Surveys in September and January got more than 2,300 responses from the public, helping the committee move from 34 potential uses for the property to three options. First, a cultural destination with an outdoor theater surrounded by open areas and walking trails. Next up, a municipal campus with a town hall and police and fire building surrounded by open land and trails. And the last one being land banking of the 30 acres with no development. You can read more about the property and its potential future at theridgefieldpress.com. Moving on to some other news now, now to Milford. The Planning and Zoning Board has expressed unanimous support for a proposal that would have the city to purchase a seven-acre parcel at 701 North Street to stop plans to build a 63-house community with an affordable component on the property. Stone Preserve, the current owner, applied in August 2014 for a conventional five-lot subdivision on the seven-acre property and then withdrew that application in October 2014. In January of 2015, Stone Preserve applied to the Inland Wetlands Agency for a re review of plans calling for a 63-house community with an affordable component under the state's affordable housing law, then withdrew those plans in May 2015. While there are no wetlands on the property, there are wetlands on adjacent parcels, including the city-owned Orchards Golf Course. The developer bought the land for $950,000 in July 2013. The current city assessment is $1.36 million. The city proposes to buy the property for $1.6 million. Milford's Planning and Zoning Commission, in addition to recommending to the Board of Aldermen that the city buy the land, also unanimously agreed to use of $269,000 from its open space fund account toward the purchase price. The account is funded by a fee assessed to developers of subdivisions. The Board of Aldermen will discuss and possibly vote on the matter at its May 2nd meeting at City Hall. Stephen Johnson, the city's open, open space and natural resources manager, said the city's 2012 plan of conservation and development action plan places a property on purchasing land that is contiguous to other open space. In addition to sharing a border with the golf course, Johnson said the property has a little more than three acres of orchards. We're going to step over to Don now and have a look at weather and find out what else is going on in the world. Don, good morning. Good morning, Rob. How you doing? Hope you had a great weekend. I, I myself got out to see some softball this weekend. You can't, uh, can't beat that under the sun. Just, hey. uh, just a, great, a great way to uh, kind of finally get into spring. I'll tell you what, it was my mom's birthday on Sunday, so I was out at the beach in Fairfield. Good time. I saw that, yeah. That, that, I, I did see the beach pictures, but uh, not really beach weather today. Uh, not bad out, but, uh, but not great for the beach. 66 expected for the high. Uh, the, what clouds we have should clear up a little bit later on before it clouds back up and we get occasional rain overnight. Uh, for, uh, low about 45 tonight. Tomorrow, 52 for the high, 37 for the low. About an 80% chance of a passing thunderstorm. Wednesday, going back up to 63 and sunny. No rain at all in the forecast for Wednesday, but a little bit chilly, dropping down into the 30s again overnight. If you happen to suffer from pollen allergies also, this is not going to be a great week for you. Uh, the, the pollen alert listed as high essentially throughout the week. So uh, right now outside our Shelton studio, it is 60 degrees on the way up to 66. 60 in Ridgefield, 59 in Greenwich. So that's your look at the weather. All right, Don. Don will be back, of course, with history. He's got sports for me today as well. And, of course, as I mentioned, we'll be talking with the actress, two-time Emmy Award winner, Loretta Swit. Of course, you know her most famously as Major Margaret Houlihan from MASH. But we'll continue with your coffee break right after this on the HAN Network. Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. 
It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where community comes first. A place where there's more than one kind of interest. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. Until April 30th, choose $150 cash for a Smeg toaster when you open a My Bank Well Choice checking account with a minimum of $2,000. A Better View Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an a rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with a Better View, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com. Hi, I'm Rob Adams with my good friend Donald Eng, and we're the home team for Nutmeg Sports Monday through Wednesday at 2 o'clock right here on the HAN Network. We are the place for all things Connecticut sports, so come hang out with us on Nutmeg Sports. Don? They don't call him the best color man in the game for nothing. Nutmeg Sports, 2 o'clock Monday through Wednesday right here on the HAN Network. I'm Rob Adams in for Kate Chaplinski. It is your Monday coffee break, a busy show today, and Don Eng has been nice enough to not only do history as always, but stand in for me with uh, weather and sports. And Don, we'll get started with history right now. Versatility, the Jose Okendo of the HAN Network, <laughs> I like to say. Uh, we're going to start in 1792. La Marseillaise, the French national anthem, composed by Claude Joseph Roger de Lisle. You can look up the lyrics if you want, but let's just say, if you think the Star Spangled Banner glorifies war, well, it's a good thing most people have only ever heard the instrumental from La Marseillaise. Uh, to 1915 we go, speaking of war, the Battle of Gallipoli begins. That is the invasion of the Turkish Gallipoli Peninsula by the British, French, Indian, Newfoundland, Australian, and New Zealand troops, beginning with the landings there at what they called Anzac Cove after the Australia and New Zealand Corps that landed there. The following year, Anzac Co uh, Day is commemorated for the first time on the anniversary of the Anzac Cove landings. If you look there at the memorial service, you will notice Turkish and Australian and New Zealand flags. It is perhaps the most magnanimous war memorial that you will ever see. The plaque at Anzac Cove is dedicated to the heroes that shed their blood and lost their lives without reference to any countries. Um, it exhorts the New Zealand and Australian mothers, therefore your sons rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mamets where they lie side by side. Uh, wipe away your tears, your sons are lying uh, in, the, in the land of a friendly country. And finally now we go, after all that war, we now go to life. 1953 for this. The Cavendish shop was to build us some tin models, and that took too long. And, uh, you know, finally in desperation, I made some other cardboard. I began moving them around, and I wanted an arrangement, you know, where I had a big and a small molecule, and uh, so how did you do it? Somehow you had to, to form link bonds. So uh, here's uh, A, and here's T, and uh, I wanted this hydrogen to point directly at this nitrogen. So I had something like this. Ooh. So then I went to the, the pair, and I wanted this nitrogen to point to this one. And I went like this. Whoa, they look the same. That, of course, was Cambridge professor James Watson explaining how he and fellow researcher Francis Crick arrived at the double helix structure for DNA. Uh, Watson and Crick would later win the Nobel Prize for Medicine for this breakthrough study in molecular biology and genetics. That is your look back in history for today, April 25th, and I'm Donald Ng. 
All right, Don, thank you. Before we go right back to Don for, of course, sports, uh, from the Greenwich Post, Greenwich Public Schools Superintendent William S. McCursey has informed the Board of Education that he will not seek renewal of his contract, which expires on June 30th, 2017. The contract, however, remains in full effect until the end of the next school year. So a little news out coming out of Greenwich. Don, right back to you. You and I could be the team for everything today. We're on this. We've got Nutmeg Sports in a little while. If only I could talk you into the softball game. I mean, it'd be, uh, it'd be Donorama today. <laughs> it, it, it would be the Don and Rob show. Uh, but actually, as far as the sports report goes, it's the Max Pacioretty show, the captain of the NHL Montreal Canadiens. Selected by his teammates as the nominee for the King Clancy Trophy, the award is given out to the NHL player who best exemplifies leadership qualities on and off the ice and has made a noteworthy humanitarian contribution in his community. The winner will be chosen by the Professional Hockey Writers Association. You can find out more about that at ncadvertiser.com. Going to take a quick run through some of the scores over the weekend in baseball. Southington beat Greenwich 2-1. Fairfield Prep 4, Norwalk 0, Jonathan Law 2, St. Joseph 1, Montville 6-1 over Staples, and West Hill 8-0 over Coggenshog. In softball, Brookfield 2-1 over Wilton, Norwalk 13-1 over Harding, West Hill also beat Oxford, Ridgefield 4, Pomperog 0, Ludlow 4, Wilton 1. On lacrosse, the boys lacrosse, your winners were Darianne, Greenwich, Ridgefield, Staples, New Canaan, girls lacrosse, St. Joe's, Danbury, Trumbull, Ludlow, and Stamford with the wins. Your baseball schedule for today, Stamford at Danbury, Trumbull at Greenwich, Staples at West Hill, Ludlow at Central, McMahon at Trinity, New Canaan at Norwalk, Darianne at Ward, Ridgefield at Wilton. All those games begin at 4, except Ridgefield Wilton at 415. And uh, for the rest of the scores and schedule for today, including the live coverage by the HAN Network, you can visit han.network. Thank you, Don. And of course, we'll have uh, the Stanford game against Danbury later today in softball. And that's a 4 o'clock start. Looking forward to that. I'll have the call for you then. But when we come back, We'll have a special guest join us here on Coffee Break. Expo excited to do so, so stick around for that as we continue. It is indeed a Monday Coffee Break with us right here on the HAN Network. For more than 50 years, Triple S has been Fairfield County's expert service for carpet, upholstery, and drapery cleaning. We provide the best in repairs and in-depth restoration, understanding fabrics and how to properly clean and restore them. Our staff will come to your home to clean your wall-to-wall -wall carpet to perfection. We can also pick up your fine carpets and bring them to our facilities. With locations in Norwalk, Stanford, and Stratford, Triple S will get the job done fast, big or small. At Triple S, you can count on our people as well as our cleaning. Find us at TripleSClean.com or 203-847-8. Join the HAN Network and Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make travel wishes come true for local kids with life-threatening medical conditions. Donate your unused airline miles to the HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign. Over 70% of wishes granted involve travel, and your unused airline miles can help make kids' dreams become a reality. Plus, once you donate your miles to Make-A-Wish, they will never expire. Donate your unused miles and help the HAN Network share the power of a wish. Walter Stewart's Market in New Canaan is your time-saving local shopping destination for the best of spring. Find many of your favorite products, from great specials on everyday items to the freshest organic produce, artisanal cheeses, and grass-fed steaks. Chop off your knives to be sharpened. Grab a beautiful bouquet of spring flowers and stop in next door for a wine tasting. Plus, their personal staff is always ready to lend a helping hand. So stop in to Walter Stewart's Market, 229 Elm Street, today, or shop online at stewartsmarket.com. For over 25 years, Mike Sizzik Painting and Wallpapering has been the name to know for residential and commercial properties in Fairfield County. He uses only the top brands, including Benjamin Moore, for impeccable preparation and lasting quality. Call Mike now and receive $500 off any job over $7,000. Mike is currently accepting reservations for spring, so call him today at 203-770-8869 or 203 203- 972-3310. For your custom painting, finishing, and staining needs, it's Mike Sizik. You are watching the HAN Network, and you're not alone. Nearly half a million viewers enjoyed our broadcasts in the first five months. Advertise on the network that reaches Fairfield County, Connecticut's most engaged audience. Contact Jessica Murren, Advertising Director, at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. 
At the Sylvan Learning Center of Darien, experienced teachers and personalized academic support equals superior results. Our certified teachers uncover skill gaps, address specific needs, and help students realize greater academic success and increased confidence. We're enrolling now. Individualized after-school tutoring in reading, math, history, elementary math, algebra, geometry, calculus, high school science, and study skills. For a free consultation, call 203-655-3276 or email gmcsylvan at gmail.com. Alberta Londano Professional Painting, Wallpapering and Carpentry has been serving Fairfield County for over 20 years. Based in Norwalk, Alberto takes pride in his work by offering you only the best quality service and products. Call Alberto today to get a free estimate and be one step closer to a new and exciting home makeover. 203-866-9635. Do you need help reaching or maintaining your fitness goals? For over 20 years, Mike Pernice has tailored his time and expertise to clients on both coasts whose schedules demand flexibility and accountability. Mike is a certified lifestyle manager and has been called upon to help his clients eliminate negative behaviors such as coping with stress, improving their time management, setting realistic life goals, and cutting down compulsive behavior. If you're ready to start working toward a more energetic, productive, and healthier you, call Mike Pernice. I'm Denise DiGregoli, the host of The Drive on the HAN Network. Join me Tuesdays for some motivational, intelligent talk with a little humor as we visit with people who live their lives mindfully. Tune in to The Drive live on Tuesdays, 1230, here on the HAN Network. When it comes to local entertainment, we've got it all. From movies, local artists, etiquette, and more. Watch HAN Arts and Leisure every Thursday at 2 on the HAN Network. I'm John Kovach. I'm a newspaper editor. I'm a high school football coach. I'm a television presenter. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do. Tune into Yankee Fisherman Thursdays at 1 on the HAN Network. It's like going to the tackle shop without leaving your office. Join the HAN Network and Make-A-Wish Connecticut to help make travel wishes come true for local kids with life-threatening medical conditions. Donate your unused airline miles to the HAN Network Wishes in Flight campaign. Together we can share the power of a wish. Join the Had a sports injury or a slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast without an appointment. Biking, golf, tennis, soccer, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday in the I Park building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com. That's CoastalOrthoExpress.com. Like them on Facebook. It's time to come back to hometown banking, where people are taken into account, not just balances. Where community comes first. A place where there's more than one kind of interest. Where they not only know your name, they know your dog's name too. It's time to expect more. It's time to bank well. Bank smart. Bank local. Bank well. Until April 30th, choose $150 cash for a Smeg toaster when you open a My Bank Well Choice checking account with a minimum of $2,000. A Better View Window Cleaning Plus has been cleaning glass all over Connecticut for over 20 years. They also specialize in cleaning chandeliers, mirrors, skylights, tiles, and will power wash anything that needs cleaning. They hold an a rating with the Better Business Bureau and are fully insured and bonded. When you deal with a Better View, you're dealing with the best, not the rest. Call today for a free estimate, 203-284-8836, or visit them online, abetterviewcleaning.com.
And back with you on your coffee break for this Monday. I'm Rob Adams with Donald Eng. Thanks to Don for hanging out with me. We will return to a little more local news now as we continue on your Monday coffee break. A 53-year-old Darien resident was charged with DUI after her car struck another at the intersection of Middlesex Road and Naroten Avenue. Police said three cars were involved in the accident and identified Susan McGoldrich of Bittersweet Lane as the offending driver. No injuries were reported and and McGoldrich told police that she thought she saw a green light while traveling east on Middlesex. The officer at the scene detected the odor of alcohol coming from McGoldrich's vehicle, but she initially denied drinking. She was unable to pass field sobriety tests, and a pair of breathalyzers of tests showed her blood alcohol content levels at 0.11 and 0.10. She allegedly admitted to drinking after failing the test and was charged with DUI. McGoldrich posted $250 bond and is due in court on April 26th. Over the East and now, they'll hold their annual town meeting tonight, setting a budget in the wake of cuts to the amount of money coming from the state for education. The meeting starts at 7.30 at Samuel Staples Elementary School at 515 Morehouse Road. The agenda includes discussion of the proposed $43.7 million budget for fiscal 2016-17 recommended by the Board of Finance. The town meeting may act to reduce but not increase the proposed municipal budget. However, cuts proposed by Governor Daniel P. Malloy would reduce the $590,000 Easton was set to receive in education cost sharing to $257,000 or eliminate the grant entirely. A vote on Easton's 2016-17 budget will be held Tuesday, May 3rd at six, from 6 to 8 at Samuel Staples Elementary School. Going to turn it back over to Don as we have just a couple of minutes left on the show. A couple of things for you. One thing we didn't get to in sports because we were so kind of uh, tied up with other things going on today. We've got a huge lacrosse game coming up this Saturday that if things stay the, say, the, the, the way they are right now, and we'll talk more about this on Nutmeg Sports, of course, we will have two of the top lacrosse teams in the country on our airwaves this Saturday. Yeah, it is, a, it is a remarkably consistent record these two teams have. Of course, Darianne, New Canaan in lacrosse. And really, with these two teams, it, it could be, it doesn't really almost matter what, what, what the sport is, what, what the game is, you know, ch ch lacrosse, football, checkers. When these two teams meet, they want to win. That's it. So Darian New Canaan this Saturday at uh, Darian High School. We'll have a special pregame show on Saturday as well, rounding up all kinds of great guests to talk things over. We will have Dan Arestia join us today. Uh, he now works for the Darian Times, but is also a huge lacrosse guy, has coaching in his background, very knowledgeable, and he knows kind of the background of both Darian and New Canaan. So he'll be with us on Nutmeg Sports today. Frank Renita will join us later in the week. We have a few other things we're trying to work on. So we're trying to get everybody fired up for really one of the biggest games in the country. This I'm a little nervous about it. Well, you know, it's and you know, and lacrosse has always ha kind of has the reputation of being like a kind of like a specialty sport. But uh, but in this case, it, you know, it's you know the 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 eyes of the national lacrosse uh, powers are going to be focused right here in Fairfield County. How are we looking on? I mean. It looks okay outside right now, but I can't say it's the most fantastic day just yet. No, I mean, the weather is going to be about, uh, about, about like this for most of the day. Should clear up a little bit in a little while and then, uh, and then maybe cloud up again overnight. And and we're going to be in the, in, in the 60s for, for most of the day, dropping into the mid-40s overnight. So, uh, so yeah, so, so not, not great weather, but not bad. So you can, uh, you'll, you'll be able to call a game in your shirt sleeves and, uh, and not <laughs> worry about putting on too much sunscreen. And as Don said, perfect job. Nice segue. We'll be down at Stanford High School later today for softball between the Stanford Black Knights and the Danbury Hatters. Don and I back for Nutmeg Sports at 2 o'clock today. As I said, Dan Arestia will join us to start helping us get all set for a huge Saturday in lacrosse that will not only be huge for the FCAC and Connecticut, but might be big on a national stage as well. So great stuff today, Don. I'll see you for Nutmeg. I'll be back. All right. Of course, we uh, had uh, something happen with the transmission on Ms. Loretta Swift. We hope to reschedule. She is appearing on May 1st at the Klein. Uh, that appearance, in fact, will be in a, pro in a uh, play called Eleanor Roosevelt, Her Secret Journey. It's a one-woman play by Rhoda Lerman, and that will be Sunday, May 1st at 530 at the Klein, 910 Fairfield Avenue in Bridgeport, 
tickets are on sale at thecline.org. With all that said, that'll do it for your coffee break for this Monday. Thanks to AJ Simonowski for directing and to Donald Eng. I'm Rob Adams. Enjoy your Monday. We are back with you for Nutmeg Sports and Softball later today, right here on the